Hello, let's take a look at what should be a part of your DevOps engineer resume. In this presentation, we'll take a look at the various skills that should be a part of your resume as a DevOps engineer and the various tools and information that you should add to your resume that will help highlight the fact that you are a DevOps professional with adequate knowledge of various tools and techniques, as well as a great team player who can work in collaboration with other teams. Since DevOps is a philosophy on how to do software development where a whole bunch of best practices are used at the various stages of an SDLC project, and since it also uses a lot of tools for automating the non-human steps that are part of an SDLC lifecycle, organizations that are building DevOps teams and that are looking for DevOps professionals are certainly looking for tools knowledge and implementation. But that's not all they are looking for. Since DevOps talks about a lot of collaboration between developers and operations, development and business, and development and testing, they are looking for well-rounded, cross-skilled professionals that also have adequate soft skills, which are required to work in a large team, to be able to collaborate with teams that have completely different expertises, like operations, professional, performance management teams, and security experts. So. You not only need the tools and know-how, but also the necessary soft skills to be able to work with such a team and possibly the skills to work with your end customers to understand their requirements, their needs, and their problems when you are working on developing a software for troubleshooting an issue in production. These are some of the skills that a DevOps engineer must have. Certainly great with soft skills a very good, broad understanding of various tools and technologies and the various steps of the software development lifecycle, all the way from development to monitoring production. A good understanding of software and infrastructure security, because security with or without DevOps continues to remain the most important aspect of software development and delivery. Knowledge of various tools that can help you automate your infrastructure. Automate various scripts, that you would be required to run, to set up, to configure your infrastructure. Also, a DevOps engineer should have a good understanding of testing and of various testing tools and frameworks available that are used by your project team. A DevOps engineer should certainly, needless to say, have a customer-first mindset because we are not just delivering software code anymore. We are delivering value for our customer. We are delivering software that adds value, that brings value to our customers, and a DevOps engineer should be able to collaborate. I cannot emphasize collaboration enough when it comes to DevOps. A DevOps engineer should be flexible and able to learn new tools and techniques and to make necessary modifications to either your architecture or design depending on what the customer has in mind or what they are trying to target. Network awareness as developers historically has always been very, very focused on writing the code, and honestly, developers did not spend a lot of time, or probably not get the time, to understand the network aspect of infrastructure, and when software gets deployed, how the whole thing comes together. Lastly, a DevOps engineer should be a big picture thinker, thinking about the entire software solution, not just about the code, or about test cases, or just about performance testing, not just about how the customer will use it, but a big picture of overall solution. And of course, we cannot talk about DevOps without talking about tools. So these are some of the tools that you should be familiar with. You should be an expert on at least a few of these tools in each of the categories, starting with source code management, the Git or Bitbucket, one of the build tools at least, like Maven or Gradle, and continuous integration servers, either Jenkins, Team City, Bamboo, Travis CI, or Visual Studio Microsoft Solutions. Configuration management tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible, or Salt. Containerization solutions like Docker, Swarm, Kubernetes. Various cloud solutions like Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform, or even OpenStack. Various testing platforms, testing frameworks like Selenium, Cucumber, Jasmine, or SonarCube, and various monitoring tools like Splunk, Nagios, or Genios. This is not to say you need to know all of these tools, but you do need to be familiar with each of these tools. For instance, 
What are the differences between Jenkins and Team City? What are the benefits that Team City brings in, or how can you use Swarm or Kubernetes both to manage your Docker containers? You need, of course, to be an expert on at least one of the tools in each of the categories to call yourself a DevOps engineer. So, once you've polished your soft skills and you gained the technical know-how, now it's time to highlight that in your resume. As organizations look for DevOps professionals, some of the things they would look for in a resume are projects where you've used various tools, where you have been responsible for implementing certain tools or pipelines or best practices. Make sure you highlight that appropriately in your resume. List the various tools that you have working knowledge of, and certainly list the tools that you have used in various projects and how you used it, with a brief description of what the architecture of the overall project was like, where the tool played in, and a bit about what your role was in implementing the tool. Make sure also to list some of the soft skills that we discussed earlier, like being a team player, examples of your collaboration, example of you taking the ownership and completing things successfully, and of working with different teams, and how that made a difference to your project. Because certainly, that is one thing organizations do look for when they are looking for DevOps engineers. DevOps teams are very different from the way software development teams used to work. Developing or testing or operations would work in their own silos. A DevOps team is supposed to be working all together. Everybody is on the floor at the same time, understanding what each other person has to add to the project and how to implement that. So, it is really important that you highlight your teamwork skills somewhere on your resume, and wherever possible, you try to mention some numbers or percentages, like percentage gain on the time, percentage gain of the execution time, any percentage reduction in time to create a build, to deploy a build, or a complete test execution, or perhaps a percentage of successful deployments that you have had in that project, or the percentage of time that you have managed to reduce by adopting some of these tools or setting up some of these pipelines using CI-CD. If you can gather some data and information to showcase your DevOps projects, then that certainly makes huge impacts on your resume. And lastly, it may be needless to mention, but make sure you have the necessary knowledge to support whatever you write on your resume. If you have worked on a tool, then don't only write that this is the tool that you have worked on. Write which project you worked on and when and what your role was. Be sure to be clear if you have only working knowledge or theoretical knowledge of an area like continuous integration, configuration management, or even a tool, then just mention that. But you don't have to go out of your way to say you did not work with a tool. Don't do that. So, I hope all of this is useful and helps you put together your resume. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.